Hello, welcome to my podcast, Inside and Inspiration. I'm Christine Binia, you're here on my channel, and thank you so much for tuning in. I want to spend the next 20 minutes um, discussing with you how you overcome adverse childhood experiences, which basically means abuse, neglect, or any form of stress factors that you have experienced when you were little. Like this topic is very popular at the moment um, by a TED talk from Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. I don't know if you have listened to her TED talk, but I really, really recommend you to do that. What she has stated in such a beautiful way is that there is a really big amount of children being exposed to abuse, neglect, or other stress factors like a parent that is um, separated or that is dead, unfortunately, or parent that is mentally ill, that is dependent on substances, that is imprisoned. So there are all these kind of stress factors, and unfortunately, a really large amount of children go through these experiences right now, in this very moment. And I'm not talking about socially challenged families. I'm really talking about families from all parts of society from all income levels from all education levels that have these struggles and in my family it was similar I was coming from a middle class family I was coming from a family that had money at least most of the times even though I also experienced some years where money was short and we didn't even have warm water in the house in winter for several years and I was experiencing a lot of aggression and a lot of um, neglect in the sense that no one really cared what I was up to and what I was doing and how school was going and what I was eating and what I was wearing, how you know I was emotionally doing. And if you count that up, um, I actually have a, an ACE score, um, which stands for Adverse Childhood Experience Score of 6 out of 10. So the statistics say that at least in a research group of Dr. Burke Harris, there were 80% of adults that she assessed who had at least one point or more on this scale. So they had at least one traumatic experience or more and one out of eight, so that is even a very large amount of people, had experienced four or more of these childhood dysfunctionalities in their families and the shocking thing about it and at the same time also the the big enlightened thought that was coming up was that um, if you have experienced this if you're one of those kids if you're one of those adults who have experienced this childhood you are not alone in this and I think that's the bias um, we're often faced in society that we think it's just us it's just our story and everyone else is fine no one can understand me and the truth is that there are millions of children going through these adverse childhood experiences and who experience traumatic experiences and who are alone and nobody looks at them understands them cares for them and when those kids become adults they are facing severe disadvantages because they don't really know how to go in a healthy relationship they've never learned it unless they had maybe someone um, maybe outside of the family who would give them a certain um, hope and who would show them what love is and what trust is and that they have someone they can be um, they can be open with and honest so those kids when they grow up they have severe challenges they don't know how to have healthy good relationships they don't know about their own value nobody ever taught them that they're worth something they have challenges to focus they have challenges to access their potential they don't believe in their own potential they might have some areas where they're very confident because that was field that was particularly easy for them in school for instance but overall they would probably have low self-esteem and they would be afraid to stand up for themselves some of them would maybe overcompensate by presenting themselves as super tough and super strong while inside they're very vulnerable and others would just totally not believe in themselves and would just underperform um, and um, and would never you know finish studies or finish school 
they would never be stable in a in a professional environment so um they're very very vulnerable to mental illness physical illness all kinds of substance abuse and just also find themselves in the same kind of damaging relationships they have experienced when they were little so that is really a big thing and i don't think we're talking enough about this um, on television shows in the radio you know on all this broadcast media that we have to reach the population we are not talking enough about this and i think the people who have suffered this a they felt very alone because how can it be that a child has developmental issues has issues to bond with other kids has issues to f- to found friendships has issues to perform in school is maybe very aggressive in order to compensate or is maybe very shy maybe it has hdd um what is often diagnosed today with kids and nobody's wondering what is the source what is it that is actually influencing those kids and too often when authorities check they would not check properly or they would rather believe a parent than the child so that is really dramatic so those kids already feel like nobody actually cares and that the parent is stronger than them so the outside world is stronger than them so that's already the first very very dramatic and severe experience they feel like if i open up if i defend myself i will never win and second when they are adults some of them maybe think that they are irreparably broken that their experiences have damaged them in a way that they can never recover and that they will always be doomed to have miserable relationships and to feel frustrated anxious and just depressed i'm telling you all of this because I know from own experience that there is a solution and that the initial thought that one is irreparably broken is not true. It might take time and it might take a long time. Let's talk 10 years, 20 years to actually fully recover. But I have learned that those experiences even though you will never maybe never really appreciate them and you will always think that you wouldn't, you know, you would have preferred to have a different childhood. those experiences can become assets and they become um they can strengthen your own compassion and they can make you a person that is much um much more loving and caring and positive and aware than the parents ever have been so it can be transformed in something absolutely positive while i understand that and that's something that i think to myself very often um you know I, if i could turn back time I mean I I want to be the person I am now obviously so I wouldn't give that up but obviously I would have loved to have a different childhood and I think I would have deserved it and so would you and but the point is we cannot change it we cannot change the past and that's why at a certain point we have to learn accepting that this is what the reality was and that this was a p- particular period of your li- of our lives let's say 10 years 15 years 20 years i don't know how long you stayed with your family and how long you were exposed to this but that was a particular period of your lives that was temporal limited and that there was something before and there will be something after and it's you who decides whether you want to expand the influence of this forever or if you want to change something significantly which will not go from one day to another but which will be a process obviously but it can end in you being a fully recovered person and you will maybe not even see the difference to others who didn't have these kind of experiences when they were little so that's where i am at at this point that there is literally no no difference no difference in relationships no difference in professional life no difference in income no difference in how i like myself i think that i'm really established to a very high degree my initial well-being and that is because i categorically challenged every thought and every idea that i had about life and this was a gradual process obviously and i will tell you how how this came so i moved out from home when i was i don't know 18 19 and i went to university and i went to another city as many of you probably do and you are in this period where you think wow now everything will be different now i will have 
love now we'll have friends now i will you know everything will work out for me and i will be finally that person i always wanted to be and then the weeks and months go by and you realize that you are in again in a miserable relationship and you are again depressed it doesn't have to be always connected to other people actually it can also be that you fall back into a sense of feeling like you have no orientation and you have a lack of a lack of inner joy and of just of inner balance and you can't even name it it's just this feeling of something's wrong with you and something's wrong with your life and just you're not in the in the feeling that you're supposed to be in so mostly when we try to run away from something it ends in the same drama it did before if we don't do our inner work but in order to do the inner work we have to understand that we are the problem so it takes a while like for me it took four or five turns four or five relationships four or five miseries to actually understand that I can't blame it on the past I can't blame you know people who are not part of my life anymore actively for something that goes wrong now as an adult person living in another city, being surrounded by other people. So this has to do something with me and my inner mindset, my inner beliefs. And this was actually the the spark. Finally, I had a feeling of, I am able to take on responsibility for what happens in my life now. And I am willing and able to look at everything that I've learned about myself and about, you know, life in general, about relationships and to question it. And just to give you a few ideas, for instance, I believe that, you know, a woman will never be really, really respected by a man, that she will always need, you know, to fight for love, that she will always need to um, fight for attention, that she always will need to do something in order to be loved. And I also believe that I will never be able to live my potentials and to put myself out there and to just be who I am and be successful with it. I just didn't believe it. I thought that, you know, this is for other people and this is not for me. And I also believe that in a relationship, for instance, I would always need to protect myself. I could never be really opening up because... I had to be afraid that someone is taking advantage of this and that someone is stepping over my limits. And this were many of those beliefs that I had about my role in relationships and about my value. And I think the worst belief of it all was the idea that something was damaged, something was not repairable and that I always could just recover to a certain degree but never fully I could never make this experience of how it would have been to grow up in a family that was just intact and it was functional in all you know all aspects and that I would be deprived from this experience and that I would never be that version of myself that I would be with all of this love and compassion and understanding that other people have received and I remember that there came a time when I was finished my, with my studies and I moved to another country, actually, to take on a new life, a new adventure. So again, a bit the idea of running away and then making it somewhere else. But at this point, I was already a bit smart. I, I had all these tools. I knew from reading a lot and from watching a lot of YouTube and being inspired by a lot of people, I knew that if I was willing to radically accept that I was responsible, something would change. And I was in this new country and things at the beginning were not going as well as I thought. And I had a first job and the first job was not going so well. I did not feel comfortable. And there was a moment where I had to step up for myself and I did. And this was such a liberating moment because for the first time I was stepping up for myself. I had trust in myself. I knew I can make it work out. I knew it will be for my advantage. And it was. I did something that was counterintuitive for everyone around me. Everyone would have said, don't quit that job. Don't do it. And you don't have another job yet. Why are you putting yourself in that risk? At the same time, I had a house that I rented, which was expensive, obviously. So why why do you put yourself in that risk? And I felt so strongly that... This was my opportunity to prove that I can do it and that I have to listen to my instinct. I have to listen to my gut feeling. I have to listen to that inner notion that that's not good for me. That's not the environment where people respect me and that's not what should happen. And I was standing up for myself. I was handing in this 
cancellation letter and I was just standing up and I was sent home right away and it was like the fin most fantastic two, three months that happened late afterwards where I had money and I had time and I was just so proud of having protected myself and that was when I got my first taste of how it feels to be happy and how it feels to have self-confidence and just liking everything about myself, about my character, about the decisions I take. And I was just so full of pride for what a badass girl I was <laughs> taking all these decisions. So fast forward, now we are several years fast forward. And obviously, and I think that's that's just applying to life in general. It's never going like straight, always constantly up. You always have these periods where it's like you challenge yourself whether you're ready to go for the next level, whether you really have learned your lesson, whether you have really, you've really freed yourself from certain beliefs, because sometimes you just think you're free, and then you come in another situation that challenges you, and then you understand, hmm, maybe I wasn't as free as I thought. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you, but I had that several times, that I was so confident, well, yeah, now, now it's over, now I have got the point, now I'm moving on. And then I realized that there is actually still some some negative belief hidden somewhere inside of me. And I'm challenging myself through the situations that I create in my life to actually see it, get aware of it, and deal with it. And then I'm ready to move on. Um, so if you look at the essence of what I, what I try to, to say today and to discuss with you today is that taking on the responsibility takes time because we come out of this mindset that the others our environment makes us feel bad and it was true for a while because as a child you have no other where to go you this is just your family and that's where you have to make it until you have a certain age and you will always try to adapt and to understand and to change it and to, to or change yourself you will always try to find into a sense of harmony that's just what we human beings do and that everything does in this world i find striving for harmony so you try to harmonize with this environment but at the same time this means that you you disconnect from yourself and from what's true to yourself because you need to disconnect from what you really feel so it's a really it's, it's like really really split and very very like twilight zone-ish where you like in one time you feel this resistance and in the other time you want to harmonize and it's just it's just really really tough and then but then you know when you are an adult and you're living somewhere else and you have your own life that is when you cannot say that something else is influencing you because you have to take on that responsibility you are the one who is in charge and things happen according to what you have inside of you i mean now i'm mixing it a bit up with a new topic that i definitely want to do a podcast about but i have several videos here on youtube if you're interested in it now then i'm talking about the law of attraction and how everything we are inside is becoming our reality so that is actually then at the root of all of this why am i repeating again and again the same kind of miserable situations it's because inside you're still attached to those beliefs and you still think that's the reality so you get it again and again and again until you understand that you have to free yourself from that belief i want to leave it today with this i think i have given you a lot of input and please feel free to comment to tell me if that inspired you or what what are the ideas the thoughts the feelings that came up while listening to the podcast if you have any particular topics that you're interested in let me know then i can do something um, in the following weeks or month and hope to hear you next time. Bye.